you know, and then, and then maybe a year of whatever, I started booking one nighters in my town so I could host. And then other guys like me that were booking one nighters in like Connecticut, Long Island, I would go, you could work my gig if I could work yours. Then we would trade. You have, you have something to work We with. would trade. You know, and I brought in guys. I had guys at my one-nighter. You know, like back then, Dennis Wolfberg, Joe Bolster, Mulrooney. I had I had Richard Jenny opening for, for Mulrooney. You know, and Richard Jenny, you know, Mulrooney, I go, just bring whoever you want. So, we, you know, they get to the gig, and Jenny's like, he's got this attitude, right? And I, he goes, I don't know if you know who I am, but I'm Richard Jenny. I work at the Rising Star. I go, well, you're working here for $60 tonight, <laughs> right? But he, and one of the best comics throughout the 80s and yeah, 90s, yeah, I, hands yeah. down, hands down. And he had an attitude from day one because he knew he was that good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I always got along with these I guys. I got along with Richard Jenny so did really I. well. Yeah. God rest his soul. He yeah. taught me a lot. I learned, I worked a few weeks with him and just watched him. I was like, whoa, whoa. Did you did you ever see Dennis Wolfberg work? No, man, this guy clean powerhouse. He was a, I mean, just killed for. Same with all those guys back then. John Mulroney, there was tons of them that used to just slaughter on stage. I heard John Mulroney was a killer. Oh, yeah, killer crowd work, the best crowd work, and you know, real good looking girls loved him. He just he just go up there and slay, and there was such. In the eighties, there was so much work, so many. You know, in Jersey, New York. What year you know, did you get into this racket? I, I let's see. I thirty. I guess I've been doing it thirty five years, because I got thirty three years clean, and I was getting high for two at least two years in the business. So you thirty five years clean? No, thirty three years. Thirty three years clean. But I was getting high when I started the first first couple of years. Okay. At least two. So I've been doing it for like 35 years. But the first two years was in a blackout. But, you know, <laughs> so 35. If you think about it, if I had a goddamn job at a post office, I could have retired and had a pension by now. I could be living work free. But as a comic, you don't quit. You quit when you're dead. You can't quit this. How could you quit? <laughs> what else am I going to do? You know, Bonnie's like, let's move to L.A. and I'll get a writing job. I go, fuck that. I'm not... I work in, you know, I'm in New York. That's my base. I could work in the city, and you know, and I go on the road from New York. You still go on the road every week, I heard. A lot, yeah. Pretty much. You know, one, uh, you know, I got to keep coming up with new material. You know, I'm putting out my sixth album. It's ready now, but I might not release it till around Christmas, but I'll put it on Sirius now. But... I got to keep writing and creating to stay as relevant as I can. You know, you know comics that get caught caught up in shit they were doing 10 years ago. That's terrible. You know, uh, are you kidding me? You know, I can't, I, I can't talk about Nixon. I got, you know, I got, <laughs> <laughs> what am I, oh so God. you got to keep creating. So when I go on the road, I'm doing an hour minimum so I could do new material. Like New York, this guy's in New York. You know, they'll bounce around and do spots and they'll work out there. I work my stuff out on the road because I'm going to get paid and work out new material. You know what I'm saying? So You don't go out there in a week? Where, to New York? Yeah. I'll go to New York one or two nights at the most. But if I'm in town, I'll work the weekend in Okay, New York. see, that's what I do. If yeah. I'm, listen, I'm to the point where, you know, from 91 to... 2004, I was out seven nights a week. You know, yeah, you were out seven nights a week, and then it trimmed down to five nights a week, and then it was still animalistic. You know, you're, you're yeah. out every night, and once my wife had the baby, I got a little older. I can't go to the store every night till no. one in the morning. It just I would be dead because of the sleep issues. I don't sleep well, so yeah. that means I wouldn't go to bed till two, and I'd be wide awake at six. That means by Wednesday, I got to cancel everything on my agenda because I can't fucking move. Yeah. I get that tired. So I've learned to now, it's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. If I'm in town, I'll try to do those two shows at the comedy store. So I'll do the main room Thursday. Yeah. Originals, that's five spots. 
If I stay home the whole month, that's 20 spots. That's not bad. That's not bad. Plus, I'm writing. writing. Plus, I'm writing. And you're doing two podcasts a week. You're doing somebody else's. And I'm being the most important thing I can be, a father. That's, listen, everything else. That's what changes. You know, last night I was looking at my daughter at the table. I have a podcast with her on Tuesdays about science, I was telling you. Oh, yeah. Just we don't tape it or nothing. We just do it to entertain her so she reads. And I was sitting there going, you know, it's a shame I have to go out seven nights a week. You know, I have to go out at night. I know she personally doesn't like it. She lives with it. I explain that we keep the lights on. She doesn't like it. I just know. I know her type. But I feel like I'm in the mafia. What would you do if you were in the mafia and you were known as the top hit man? And one day by mistake, you got your girlfriend pregnant and now you got these two kids. And every day when you leave, you don't know if you're coming home. Yeah. You don't know if you're coming home. I might get into a shootout. (laughs) Today's the day that they might find the gun from 68 or (laughs) today's the day that I get arrested for something, you know? And I feel the same way now. Like, between you and I, I love going on the road. I love it. Me I too. think it's. I loved it when I was getting high. <sighs> oh yeah. When I was getting high, oh my God, that was. I could. I could stay clean for three days because I knew I was going away for four. And nobody would see me. It was part of the addiction. Oh my God. Yeah, it's easy to stay clean on a Tuesday because what's coming Wednesday night? Yeah. They're already waiting for me in Houston. The package is in. The, the, the what does he say yeah. in uh, in Carlito's way? The holes are dug. The sandbags are ready. Like I'd be ready to go. Now that I have no addiction, the road, I still love doing comedy, but I know I can't go out every weekend. Well, here's the thing in New York, I could just like, this weekend I'm in New York, I'm at a club and I'm doing it like a door deal, whatever. I'm at, it's it's a, a showcase club, but I'm headlining it. So it'll be, instead of three acts doing 20 minutes, I do an hour and I'll get everybody's money. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. But then, you know, and if I wanted to, which I didn't, I could have put late spots in at the cellar. You know, I could walk out of New York in the city on a weekend with a thousand or more dollars. Or if I'm headlining Gotham, then it's real money, you know, when you're headlining. So, but I'll do spots. I won't go crazy. If I'm in town on a weekend, I'll do a couple spots at the stand, one at one at the cell, like three spots on a Friday, three on a Saturday. I might go in on a Tuesday, you know what I mean? But when I go on the road, you know, and I won't go for more than a week. You know, I don't, I always have to come home. I have to come home. So I'll do, what, Thursday through Saturday or Sunday, and then come home, be home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, you know. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.